Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you through Jesus Christ. We acknowledge you as God and we give you thanks. We thank you for this time and this moment. We pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that you would be present. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would be active. I pray in the name of Jesus, Father, that what is said would be a blessing and would be beneficial to those who are hearing. I pray, Father, that you would put your words into my mouth, that you would fill me with your Holy Spirit to overflowing. I pray, God, that this time, Lord God, would, uh, would be productive, Lord God, and that it would be all that you have purposed it to be. God, I pray that you will prepare our hearts to receive your word, and I pray that you would move by the power of your Holy Spirit. I thank you for everyone that's listening. Pray your blessings on them in Christ's name. Amen. The title of today's message is The Mysterious Power of Inner Strength. The Mysterious Power of Inner Strength. And we'll be reading from Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. So what do the Apostle Paul, a single mother, and Thomas Edison all have in common? They all possess enormous amounts of inner strength. For the Apostle Paul, he faced trials, persecution, and hardships, and still continued in his call to preach the gospel to the Gentiles. A single mother, she works past exhaustion to meet the needs of her children and give help and give them the best life possible. Thomas Edison is said to have tried 2,774 times to get the right filaments for the light bulb before he found the ones that worked properly. And in a similar sense, we as Christians require inner strength to do and continue to do what God calls us to. I want to take a look at a familiar verse and then I'll explain some of the qualities of inner strength and how to apply it. So let's look at Philippians chapter 4, verse 13 together. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13. The New King James Version reads, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now this verse is now saying It's not saying that God will help you accomplish anything or even saying that you can do anything. This verse is saying that whatever the situation and whatever God is calling you to do or be, God will strengthen you to accomplish it. And for Paul, who wrote that verse, that meant continuing to preach Christ, preach about Christ, despite the trials and persecutions he'd faced. Now I want to take a look at the verse in a different version, the amplified version. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, and this is coming from what's called the Amplified Version of the Bible. It reads, I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. And that that phrase there, I am ready for anything and equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. is so important. That's kind of the foundation of the message today. So we're going to talk about some qualities of inner strength and then how to apply it. The first quality of inner strength I want you to notice is that inner strength comes through the Holy Spirit. Inner strength comes through the Holy Spirit. In Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, the Apostle Paul writes, I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, that's God, God will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. Through his spirit. The Holy Spirit is our helper sent from God. That's what Jesus told us in John chapter 14. He sent us his helper, uh, sent us the helper from God. He helps us in many ways. But the way we're speaking of today is by empowering us with inner strength. The Holy Spirit will give strength to your inner man 
your inner being, your inner person, and he'll help you to do what God wants you to do. It's like it says in Philippians 2.13, for it is God who works in you both to will and to do for his good pleasure. So the Holy Spirit, the inner strength comes through the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit in us. The second quality that I want you to notice is that inner strength can be a bit mysterious. It can be a, a bit mysterious because inner strength comes from the Holy Spirit. It can have a mysterious element to it. In John chapter three, verse eight, when Nicodemus went to visit Jesus, Jesus told him that the wind blows wherever it wants. And just as you can hear the wind, but can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So you can't explain how people are born of the spirit. Now, we can, now, he's specifically speaking of salvation, how people are converted by the Spirit of God. But we can broaden that to other works of the Spirit. How we can't explain how the Spirit is working in someone. And this, this verse shows that the work of the Holy Spirit is inexplicable at some, sometimes. Sometimes it can't be explained. And that's just the mysterious side of God and His Holy Spirit. And that's how inner strength works. You can't really explain how it's produced in a person. You just know that God is the one producing it through his Holy Spirit. So it's a bit mysterious. Thirdly, inner strength is needed when our physical or outer strength is insufficient. It's just those moments when we run out of our outer strength, our own strength, that we, we need the inner strength of God. And there are times when we simply get tired. Life can have us running to and fro, and it just wears us out. We can become mentally, physically, and emotionally drained, but yet still have something God is calling us to do, or still need strength to keep going. This is where we learn to rely on God. We, learn, we lean into the faithfulness of God to provide the strength, the wisdom, and the provision that we need. And sometimes we're simply not enough in our own strength. But with God's help, we are equal to the task. We're equal to the task. So inner strength comes from the Holy Spirit, through the Holy Spirit. Inner strength can be mysterious. Inner strength is needed when our outer strength or physical strength is insufficient. And lastly, in my experience, inner strength comes a little at a time. It comes a little at a time. It's many times that we only need a small amount of strength to go just a little further with God. And, and if you look throughout the Bible, God's provision often works this way. That there's only so much for a certain amount of time. We see phrases in the Bible like daily bread. And today's trouble is enough for today. Even in the miracle of the feeding the 4,000 when Jesus fed 4,000 people with just a few small loaves and fish, it was just a little more than enough for the situation. All the food for all time is not produced in a single crop. And all you need for your entire lifetime may not be provided all at once. And even in nature, there's only so much provided for a certain time or a certain season. But even less is needed. And that's how inner strength is. It comes a little at a time, enough for the moment, enough to move you a little bit further. So those are some of the qualities, the quality of inner strength. Now, how to apply inner strength? How do we make use of it as God has provided it? And I can only explain this as I've learned it and that, and that I am learning it. The first thing, the first step in applying inner strength is to limit your scope. When we talk about scope is limit how much you're trying to do. Don't try to do too much. And in a very practical manner, I just identify your next step. Just identify the next step that is what God is calling you to do. Just the next step. Don't try to go two steps at once. Don't try to go three steps at once. Just what's the next step? It may just simply making it through the day. It may just simply keeping your composure in a moment. It may just be simply um, preaching the next sermon. But just identify the next step. 
Limit your scope. Don't try to do too much. Secondly, ask God for wisdom. Ask God for wisdom. After you've limited your scope, you identified what's the small thing you need to do next, ask God for wisdom. He'll show you what you really need. And oftentimes, less is more. In James chapter 1, God, uh, James says that God wants us to ask him for wisdom. So you won't get upset that we're asking. So we limit our scope, ask God for wisdom, then you ask God for strength. Just simply, sim- quite simple as that. A simple, sincere prayer for strength. And after you've asked God for strength, perform the next right action, trusting God to provide the flow of strength that is needed. Perform the next right action, trusting God to provide the flow of strength that is needed. Now, let me add a caveat. There there are some things that God will not do for you. He can create the opportunity. He can create the circumstances, he can create uh, all of the means that are necessary, but there are some actions and some faculties that God will not do or activate for you, that you must take the proper action or take the next step. There's some things that you must do. Just as uh, God provided the promised land, And he was with the people, but he would not go in and take it for them. They had to go in and what the Bible says, possess the land. So performing the next right action, there is an element of human involvement, of human action that is to be done by a Christian or by a person. Now, performing the next right action a little more. Just do it in the strength that you have. Just do it in the strength that you have. In Gideon, or the in the story about Gideon in Judges 6.14, um, the Bible says, The Lord turned to Gideon and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? So in that story, God just told him, Just go in the strength that you have. Gideon didn't think of himself as a mighty warrior or as a strong or You can say a strong man, but God said, go in the strength that you have. And then those moments where inner strength is needed, you have to go in the strength that you have. Trusting God to provide the flow of strength, excuse me, that is needed. I like this quote from Joyce Meyer. Um, She says, do it afraid. Do it afraid. And we can broaden that to our context that we're talking about today. Do it with the strength that you have. Do it weak. Do it. Do it as strong as you can or or in the strength that you have. So that's applying inner strength. Limit your scope. Don't try to do too much. Ask God for wisdom. Ask God for strength. And perform the next right action. Trusting God to provide the flow of strength needed. Now this is an illustration that I've come to think of uh, when I think about inner strength and moving forward with God. It's like your body is the car and your soul is the engine. Your body is the car, your soul is the engine. You press the pedal to go forward, trusting God to miraculously and mysteriously provide gas to the engine. So sometimes you may feel drained, you feel like you're on E, but you trust God to provide gas to the engine as you move forward in what he's calling you to do, what he's leading you to do. So in conclusion, we all need the inner strength that God provides. Our limited human strength is not enough. But if we go to God and ask him for strength and for wisdom, he will give it to us. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, how wonderful to know that you will never leave us or forsake us. God, thank you for sending your Holy Spirit to help us. God, we ask for the inner strength that we need. Fill us in our inner man with the strength 
and the wisdom we need for our own personal circumstances. And I pray as Paul did in Ephesians 3, that from your glorious, unlimited resources, you would empower us with the inner strength, with inner strength through your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.